There we go. So I press record, and here's my clapper, clacker, whatever. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Behind the Seams. We're back again to talk about the Great British Sewing Bee episode that was on this Wednesday on Gentlemen's Classics. Now, my name is Sarah Payne, and I am a regular sewing guest on Create and Craft, and I have with me today the gorgeous Alistair MacDonald from uh, House of Alistair. Hello, Alistair. Hello. Hello. <laughs> the very glamorous and blue looking Samantha Ooh. Hamilton from Just Bold Prince. Hello, Samantha. Hi there from Just Bold Prince. Hello. <laughs> so, welcome everybody. And just quickly, I want to um, just let you know we had a competition last week. There was a competition for you to win a hundred pounds of Create and Craft um vouchers for you to spend on any goodies that you like the look of and today alistair is going to announce the facebook winner so who won alistair well apparently um this lady is a great big fan of mine um so hello and um thank you very much for entering the competition and the winner is june hay now, i don't know where you're from june hay but well done Congratulations. Woo! Wow. Yeah, so you've got a hundred pounds to spend. Now there was another competition running at the same time on YouTube, but um, there were some issues uploading last week's episode to YouTube. So that same competition on YouTube is going to last a little bit longer. Okay. You can still go and view last week's um, episode, episode two and comment and be in with the chance of winning um, on the YouTube, not on Facebook because that's already been drawn but the YouTube one. So uh, we also have another competition, which we are um, starting <clears throat> this week. Okay, yeah. so this one, you need to count how many times we say the word sewing in this episode of Behind the Scenes, okay? And then put that in the comments and you will win a sewing bundle of uh, worth over 50 pounds and there'll be one for the facebook page so the create craft facebook page and there'll be another draw for um entries on the youtube channel as well so you could if you watch both videos you know you could enter twice mm -hmm. but remember you've got to count how many times we say sewing and that's at least one so anyway, let's have a quick um, introduction to everybody who's here today. As I said, I am a sewing guest on Create Craft. Uh, Alistair, do you want to give us a little quick uh, update as to who you are and what you're up to at the moment? Uh, so I'm Alistair and most of you will know me from uh, Create and Craft TV. And um, I run House of Alistair and I'm a women's wear designer to trade. Thank you very much, Alistair. And Samantha. Hi, my name is Samantha Hamilton from Just Bold Prints for Create and Craft. We deliver beautiful African wax fabric. So that's me. <laughs> Brilliant. So let's have a quick recap of um, this past week. So this week was Gents Classics and the, uh, the first challenge, I'm just going to go through them very quickly and then we'll sort of have our, have our chat about each one. So it was the uh, Baker Boys hat. Okay, so they had three hours to put 19 pieces together to make what we all think of as a Peaky Blinders hat, really, don't we? That's, that's, that's what it is. The second one was the transformation challenge, which was to take um, a jacket and turn it into an item of woman's clothing. Why a fashionable you... one. <laughs> oh, yes, fashionable. <laughs> fashionable. Yes, that was, there, were, there were moments where I just went, Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, and then <laughs> we had the final, um, uh, the fit challenge, the made to measure challenge, which was a, a piece of uh, men's, uh, it was a men's utility jacket. Okay, so that's what we had today. We will talk about who, who, who is leaving and who got garment of the week. But let's crack on with, first of all, the Baker Boys hat, which had 19 pieces and three hours and what were we thinking guys so first of all let's talk to samantha so sam what did you think of um the hat and did you uh did, did anything particularly stand out for you any of the designs of in course darling 
Because <laughs> you know who my favourite is, I and he yes. actually came first. <laughs> so Raphael, you know, um, interesting. And then there was Serena that they didn't like her half and half uh, coloured hat. I didn't think it was bad because she, she sewed it quite well. Um, and then there was another contestant, wasn't there, where you could just pull the top of the button oh, off? There were a couple, yeah, there were, there were a couple yeah. of those, weren't there? Yeah, where yeah. yeah. Were and, and a lot of out. misalignment lines, things weren't precise, etc. So there we go on that one. <laughs> Alistair, have you got any tips? Because they were, they were using quite a sort of coarse fabric. They were using tweeds and wools. Uh, uh, would you have any sort of tips that you can give us about how to deal with those slightly trickier fabrics when you're sewing them together in something like that with, which requires precision? Yeah I mean one thing for me was obviously when you're cutting out I've said this before about pins um fair enough put weights chalk and then cut that that that's the biggest thing let your scissors do the work so when you're cutting your scissors should be doing the work you shouldn't be pushing the fabric with your scissors that that will distort patterns and, and all sorts of things and also don't do what the sewing bee contestants do don't stick your pattern piece right in the middle of a great big piece of fabric and cut the hat out from there because as they said this would have been made from um taylor's scraps and things like that, that. well that was damien who did that didn't he yeah there was yeah, quite well there was quite a few of them <laughs> And you just saw, even though these were off cuts, you just thought, oh, this is just a bit what too much. Exactly. I mean, I would have put, um, just to uh, just to stabilise um, the piece, I would have backed it with a very, um, a very, very light piece of um, fusing. And then my other tip would be, I think where some of them were getting it wrong, and I'll be very, very quick, but obviously when you start to see the top of the hat, when it's starting to almost go like a, sh you know, like one of those pretty shells that sort of like starts small and then starts to get bigger as it goes round. If you divide it into three sections, so you sew up um, pairs and then you sew those pairs to the other pairs. And what that does is it distributes the, the sewing, if you like, and the ease all the way around the hat and start from the point and then come out to where it bags out because that's the other it's, thing. It's a bit like quilting. What's, what is it, correct me, Sarah? Is it the dura, dura, dura you know, the, the flowery, I'm not good at these Best words. The, yes, that's the one. Yeah. It's a bit like that, isn't it? It is. It's about, In terms it's of about, what Alistair was saying. And actually, I agree completely with you, Alistair, there. When I was watching them do it, um, I would not have done one piece, one piece, one piece. With the Dresden plate, that's what we do. We put together pairs, and then we put pairs into four. Yeah. Depending on how many blades you've got, you know, you might have um, you might have eight blades, in which case you're doing a quarter at a time, but you might mm. have 16. So you're doing them in pairs and sewing from the point that you're going to, that's going to be most obvious. Because if you start from the point outwards, even though it can be tricky because sometimes it gets caught under the machine when you've got very narrow points, but it means that any drift is going to then be hidden in the band, whereas their drift was right in the centre and was very obvious. So you can agree with me then, Sarah, it's very much like quilting, isn't it, doing a block? It, yes, it, it, kind, yeah. it kind of was, yes. Um, yeah. uh, personally, I, I loved uh, Rafe's hat. I thought the choice of fabric was great, but I did think, oh, I wonder if they're gonna like this, because sometimes the judges, when somebody picks something a little different to everybody else, they'll go, mm, if you don't like the fabric, you, it doesn't win. But um, and I thought, he, they had so much trouble with the covered buttons. That did make me laugh. Oh, but then the, the, the other really important was when they were putting the band in. Now, after you've, again, I'm gonna say it, based things in, then look at it. You can always change the base or if you're going to pin and pin it. But sometimes when you're trying to look at an object, if you've basted it with a thread, the pins don't stop the item from sort of moving before you start doing it. Also, why did no one turn the hat with the wool side in with the lining over the top to then attach the waistband inside? It's always easier to put, to work in the outer rather yeah. than trying to sew into a circle it just I, it baffles ask, me was, was there a pattern with this again yes and the pattern did you... say that they had to put them together that the way that they did so right. that's actually what the pattern said because i think right. andrew 
sort of went, oh, you've got to put them together this way. Um, so that that did make it make it a bit trickier. But what we had there with the so we had Rafe was the winner, Serena came second, and Adam um, came third. And then at the bottom we had uh, Loratu, Adina, and Damien. Now I didn't think Damien deserved tenth. I thought his his fabric choices were were quite good, um, and I thought he did a, he did a better job than the other two. But um, at least he read the pattern this time. Yes. Which is nice. <laughs> so then we came on to the transformation challenge, which was to take a jacket and turn it into um, a, 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 basically a woman's ga a garment, a fashionable woman. Fashionable. A fashionable garment. woman's <clears throat> garment. Which actually made me think the winner. I didn't think that was particularly wearable. And there was two meters apparently to play with, wasn't there? Yes, there's lots of there's lots of bits oh. in there. So we had the winner of that challenge was Serena. Um, and then we had Adam, Adam. who came yeah. second. Then, now Clara. personally, I think I, I know they liked Serena's where she put the lapels on the shoulders, but was it a fashionable item? Was it particularly wearable? I, I don't know, whereas I thought Adam's dress was so much more wearable. I could actually imagine seeing somebody like my niece, who's in her late teens, actually wearing something like that. What so, I found interesting, they thought they could get away with turning the jacket the other way round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there were about five of those. Let's just turn yeah, it around. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were as bored as we were. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with you on that. I thought the transformation challenge for me, I did not agree with um, Serena winning at all. And in fact, the person that actually, um, uh, spoiler alert, that um, went out, Loratu, I actually thought hers was far more, I thought that was actually really on trend. The way she had used Wait. the buttons. Yeah, mm. it was yeah. a beautiful, beautiful top. And she actually Thank made you. something, yeah. And I can't understand that. The, I mean, fair enough, you've got a snack pocket in the side, but when you saw it hanging on the, the, the mannequin... Yeah, there was no shape. There was no shape, and what it was doing at the bottom was it was it was sort of like turning back on itself. It was just lumpy. It was just... There was no coherence in terms of the fabric choices. I mean, if you're going to do like a... I mean, I don't even think Lady Gaga would wear that. I mean, you've got that sort of Gaga sort of, um, you know, shoulder, and fair enough, you've used those things but you could have been far more creative with what you had and the brief was and they also said we will be looking for they told them this at the beginning use the details because in a man's suit jacket yes you've got a lot of fabric but it's not necessary you've got to be clever in how you strip those away and then repurpose them mm. and I, and i just didn't think a mm. I just didn't think a lot of them aren't listening to the brief and they're just, and a lot of them, one of them in particular who, who won last week, she didn't use hardly any of the details. It was just panel and it, the stripes were all off and they were all going all in different way. Oh, it was, some of them were just, and that, hurt, my favorite one. that was Adina. And mm. when we were looking at, at the, the top, she got those stripes, but they weren't straight. Oh God. And, and it was, I just thought I can't. It's like when you've got a picture on the wall and it's wonky. You know, I cannot look at those. So I, I really struggled you, with that. What one. did you think of Rebecca's dress? <laughs> Which one was Rebecca's dress? Yeah, exactly. You can't remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, well, it was. It was. I think it was panels stripped across here and here That's and it. bits That's in the middle. Oh, you know. oh, that was. Oh, poor. That was hideous. A disaster. That, in my Don't hold my eyes. <laughs> no, sorry, but I mean, I mean, this, this, this episode. We were when when they mentioned it was going to be like Taylor and it was it yeah. was Jen's classics. Oh, no. I was thinking, oh no, right, okay, we've got a hat is one thing, and then the invention challenge was using suit jackets, which actually fitted in. But then the final challenge. <sighs> That was like a red. That was like a ready to wear challenge. That was that was so far removed from anything in terms of tailoring, from what 
we're perceived as to you be. know as you know alistair tailoring and you can say it with from your heart it takes how many years of doing something so i was very very surprised and yeah you've commented on my jacket that took nine hours to make Ooh. and i did it especially for this because i thought well let's see if i can do it in five hours no way there's so much technical, isn't there? If you explain mm. what the technical side is, you're looking for, you know, your shoulders to be perfect, your lapels to be fantastic, and then you've got the fusible fabric to go in, inside or whatever. Um, there was no tailoring there, was there? I mean, can you say there was any form of tailoring? No, I mean, for instance, the jacket that they were producing, it was a, it was a very casual jacket. It's the kind yeah. of style of jacket that you would see you know, sort of like um, Liam Gallagher wearing, yes. um, you know, that kind of thing. It's a relaxed fit. Now, there are the, there's two different forms of, well, there's three different um, slight forms of tailoring. So you've got Italian suits, which were always slim. They've all, always have been slim. And they've always been, you know, um, beautifully, beautifully made. Then you've got the English um, side of, um, or the British side of tailoring, which uses thicker sort of wools. Um, it was sort of a, a slightly a box of, boxier fit. But then you've got the American style of tailoring, which is more blues on, which is this, the suits are... They're, they're not um, they're not sharp. They are a very very much a relaxed fit, very very casual. Um, there's a, there's a lot more fabric in them, so you've got all those different things. But even if they were doing an American style, I just felt that they were looking for pockets. Now, if you're doing tailoring, there's a thing called welted pocket. Now, if you just go into a charity shop or go into a, a, any a shop, women's or men's and go up and have a look. Now, if the pocket fits inside where it's there, you have these mm. two little channels, which almost, if you push them together, they move like lips, they're like little um, lips. Yeah. Now, a welted pocket is a true tailoring thing. So I thought that in actual fact, if somebody had done that, then I would have thought, oh, but it wasn't, it was, it was a casual jacket. The only thing that was missing off those jackets were knitted ribbed um, cuffs and, yeah. and bands and then yeah. it would do true I, th I, I just didn't think it was I think if that there was not enough time was there there's not enough time to well, they, they had they had five and a half hours for that challenge oh, come we're, on. We're oh. about the mate when talking about if the you, measure challenge here but they if had you let Alice to tell you mm. you know when you're making a man's jacket it's not five hours is it Alistair Gosh, no. I mean, there's the, the so many principles that go into th that sort of thing. But I think, for instance, if they'd all been asked to make a waistcoat dressed to impress. Yes. 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 A that's... beautiful waistcoat lined, mm -hmm. you know, that, that would have, because I was disappointed at the lack of, at the lack of tailoring, because I was expecting more tailoring this week. Um, but yeah, it just felt a little, it felt really sort of casual and I think a, a really nicely made smart waistcoat because they are bang on trend right now. You know, the yeah. guys are out there wearing their waistcoats. The, the programme was very that. misleading. The programme was very misleading. For but anybody. it was called Jed's Classics. Yeah. So, um, I mean, were any of those jackets classics really do you know who i liked i like um damien's he's cold yes oil. i did like wow. that wow but again Very that was a shirt that oh, no. was a shirt you i disagree with... and extended the top it was an american cowboy shirt and that just goes to it. show how it was uh, yeah it was it was a great it was a great item and, and <clears> he <throat> made it beautifully and it but is it a gents classic no <laughs> See, I disagree with you both completely on that. I I, I didn't absolutely hate that one, um, but I felt that you can't you can't extend from the shoulders because you're not anchor you you're not anchoring the yokes any. That, that was just an extended yoke which formed a flap of a pocket. Now there's nothing to hold that down, and literally, he he gave the the model. Um, if you look at back, it was just almost like. He move. He had moved the guy's pecs further up. They just shot out, <laughs> and when the arms came down, because it's such a stiff fabric, it was pushing those pocket out, and you could see it was straining because you had those two silver poppers holding it down. For me, yes, baby cord and corduroy is great, but 
that was not one of my I'll friends. It wasn't the colour. I'll have to watch it back, I'll have to watch it back. I obviously I know, didn't I, see that. <laughs> I, know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Uh, so let's have a talk about quickly um, with that particular challenge. Alistair, if you had to pick one that you loved and one that you hated... Mm -hmm. it, we're all frantically looking at our notes now because because it's we, we make a lot of notes now watching watching these sh these shows. But um, do you know what you hated and what you loved? Right. So I have a, a list on. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay. So um, now Serena, I really like the pattern matching. However, I do agree with Esme that the whole point of the pocket is to actually see it now technically it was beautifully beautifully done however it ended up looking like a shirt because it ended up, even though it was a bright pattern because it was all matched up it, yeah. it it just looked like one solid piece um Rafe's was way too small now you did hear him on there saying for instance oh I've made this at home for myself and oh we're great we're the same size you know <laughs> you, I looked at but the but really? you, you, you weren't the same size. I mean, that's that's a quite a important sort of just go. I know that um, obviously, I know Sam. That's your um, he's your five. Um, but I'm just thinking that obviously, what when they run the VTs and they talk about you know their backstories and what have you, and he's only started sewing, yeah, um, during lockdown. Now, I would maybe slightly disagree with that a little bit in terms of I think he might have started sewing as a hobby during lockdown, but I think he's already got some prior knowledge of do you sewing. Know what, Alistair, do you know something? I thought that my I'm thinking, mm, 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 as he, he's been sewing longer. Don't you? Way I, longer. It's interesting you said that because I'm beginning to think, I think there's a little white lie there. Because, because also... Quite, yeah, no, sorry. No, 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 you were talking. Because he, he, he's neat when he's neat, isn't he? And he's mm. very technical in what he does and the way he speaks. I'm thinking, nah, I'm, I'm not believing this now. So, yeah, but then I, I see your he point. Started during, he started during lockdown, but he works in um, TV and we or movies. And mm. we know a lot of those have been shut down. So for all we know, he could have been sewing seven days a week during, during lockdown. Yes. And just um, what, so I, I, I'm not. I'm not so. I'm not so sure about. I'm. Just, there's some. There's because obviously, as well, we know that a lot of the contestants apply for this show because there is, a, 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 let's say, an end game after the show in terms of they might be starting up their own business. They might already maybe have a book deal and all those things come. Like, oh, that's what they're hoping for. And also, when you. One of the things in um, in the program, uh, there was a, a clip where Rafe was giving you a tip, and I thought there isn't there isn't a very, there is, there isn't a lot of people here who are being sort of like the 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 filming isn't going in terms of you know oh here's my um, sort of like tip. So I just thought it was a bit interesting, but um, I thought Adams was sorry. Getting back to the point because I know we 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 go um, in different directions. Damien's way too stiff. Um, Adam's, I thought, was nice. Um, Andrew's, the amount of pockets redeemed himself. The only thing I would say is when you're using such strong contrasting um, colours, when you're, when you're adding top stitching, use a guide foot. If you're not good at it doing it freehand, it will not look nice on the finished piece. So especially if you're using a, a contrasting colour on there. Because we're going on, I'm going to say Farah, incredible. What incredible stitching there. I mean, she was emotional, she cried, she won, and about time too. She managed to get an, uh, you know, a garment finish. I actually liked her choice of colour. And Loretto, oh my goodness me. The poor yeah, girl kept hammering mess. and bashing and banging for her, you know, rivets that didn't work. And... But I did predict she was going out. I'm sure I did. I don't know why. You know, she seems to be a bit sad there. But there you go. Yes, I, I, I did feel for her because she. It was a. It was a hot mess. Everything that could possibly go wrong did. I really like Catherine's. Yes. Uh, with the with the collar, you know, and that tweed. I love the contrasting 
collar. I thought that was that was beautiful. Um, but as we know, the winner, uh, the garment of the week was Fari, um, which I thought was really lovely because she has struggled in the previous two made to measures and just not got it finished and sort of basically came through by the skin of her teeth. But I know what they, well, before um, they went into the final challenge, the ju judges said that um, the, the ones that were likely to go home were Fari, Damien and Adina. Um, and actually they all managed to save themselves. Adina had that nightmare with the zip. Um, Damien produced, you know, that shirt that we quite liked. Some of us quite liked. <laughs> yes, that's I, 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 I guess, mm. And, and obviously Farry won. So I don't think there was really any option except for Loratu to leave, really. Um, and she came, I, I did, I did agree because I, I did agree that um, she should have come higher in the transformation challenges. But it seems to me that they're kind of ignoring the first two challenges now. They're just looking at what happens in the final challenge. Um, and I think we'll see that more and more. We'll see that even though you're coming first, second, third or fourth in the early challenge. Can I ask you, Sarah, who do you think sewing is improving immensely? And um, I will have to say, I think Damien is improving because he's paying attention. And overall, um, he is uh, he is he's re reading the patterns now, but his sewing is still um off there and I have to say Farry I thought that was beautifully made but we don't always we don't get to see the close-ups of the stitching we don't get to see the close-ups of the sewing all that often so it's it can be quite hard to judge because we're looking at it from a distance it's only when Patrick's I think I can't remember whose it was but one of the final pieces it looked great as it came down the catwalk and then Patrick went in and he said this is loose and you know this doesn't line up and this is and, and you can't really see it from a distance. So I think it can be quite difficult to judge exactly how well somebody's going. Mm. Mm. I, okay. <clears throat> I think, to be honest, I know that you, you think I'm um, sort of like anti Damien, which I'm not Damien, and uh, hello to your girlfriend at home if you're watching. Um, but actually, <laughs> I thought in the invention test, Damien actually did really, really well. Because if you look yes. at him in comparison to Andrew, I mean, that was. That was a look, um, but it just wasn't. It wasn't a look for me. I mean, just put a zip in the back. It, it's sometimes adding details and adding more. Whereas Damien actually was really constrained this week. He actually very cleverly the inside of the jacket had those beautiful red accents in it and where he had placed them now he was the only one as well to put a waistband on the actual skirt. It's very easy to just slip a facing in, and in the time that. Uh, if you if you marry it up between the time that everybody had in what he accomplished in the same time as they did, he used one of the sleeves with the button detail at the front on a high waist um, on the skirt. And I thought that was actually really imaginative. Mm. Um, so I actually really do, I really do think, but also I actually had to stand up and I actually had to what, re <laughs> I had to stand up and look at the TV dead on when they, they were coming down. Although the tops of the pockets were ma matching, I kept on thinking the the bag it, the the bags, if you like, of the pockets that were coming under. Very few of them actually had those aligned, and I was thinking, that's really odd. You've either added the um, the top of the pocket on first, and then you've then added on the second, or you've added them on and you've not done it. I mean, one of the big one of the biggest, biggest tips I can ever give anybody, especially if you're doing so, like an open-ended zip or something like that, baste the zip in and zip yeah. the zip up. Put it on the dummy and see whether or not the zip actually aligns. Because sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, it's one of those fundamental things. That will set, even though everyone will go, oh, baste it in, you know, do what have you. <laughs> it's, it will save you so much time afterwards. But it's all about the neat, menswear is all about the neatness. And Farah, when you looked at those beautiful, that tiny little flash of that African print under the bottom that was running along the yoke at the top, the, the details were really well thought out and really exquisite. I thought she well and truly deserved to win if that she, challenge. If she can complete her garments, for me now, she could be a winner. Yes. Mm. 
Okay, so on that note, in 30 seconds, because we need to think about wrapping this up, Alistair, who are your three favourites from, from this week that you think are going through? So, so far, um, week one, you said Adam, Andrew and Raphael. Week two, you said Adam, Adina and Damien. Who have you got this week? So I still, even though I haven't mentioned him that much, I still think Damien um, has a chance. Um, and I would have to say, um, I would now um, put Farah in there. Um, and so that's Farah, Adam, uh, sorry, and I'd put Adam, so there's my three, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just suddenly think there because my I've been conflicting about this all night and all morning. I was thinking, well, it just wasn't one of those anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so Sam, thirty seconds. Who's your favorite? All right, all right. I've got to say Serena because she's a dark horse. I've always said her. I'm still going to say Raphael, and I have to say Farah now. You know, so yeah, for me, definitely. Well, for, for me, um, I, I, I said last week, Adam, Serena and Damien. And the week before I said Serena, Ralph, Adam. I'm still sticking with Adam um, because I think he does, he does, he's got a great eye. But are we going to do something besides sea themes? Uh, yeah, mm. we get it. <laughs> um, I think Farry is in there because that was just a beautiful made piece and somebody we've not really talked about all that much I'm going to pop in there is Catherine I thought her her jacket that jacket that she made that with the flash of color underneath I really liked that and I thought again I thought you know you could sneak up on the inside because sometimes you know it's the people in the middle the ones at the top and the bottom we look at, but not the ones in the middle. So on that, um, I'm just going to wrap this up now and just quickly mention that next week is International Week. And I do have on my piece of paper, I did write it down, but I've got six million pieces of paper. The, um, we've got Breton Top, which I'm a big fan of. I have a couple of those, stripy ones. The transformation challenge is going to be a kimono, which I'm really excited about. I love a kimono. And the made to measure is going to be uh, based on Frida Kahlo, who is a big style icon of many of us. And I do love a splash of colour. So just to recap very quickly, uh, thank you guys for joining us. But um, there's a competition that you can take part in here on the uh, Facebook page and on the YouTube page. And basically, you've got to count how many times we said the word sewing. And there we go. Sewing. Yeah. Sewing, yeah. <laughs> how many times we said sewing and write it in the comments. And then somebody will be picked at random from both Facebook and YouTube. And they will win £50 worth of um, goodies. Uh, for, of sewing goodies from Create and Craft and do keep tuning in with us every week as we um, dissect what we think obviously these are our opinions feel free to tell us if you think we are right or if we think you, you think we are wrong because that is possible too we all have our favourites and we look forward to uh, watching episode 4 of the Great British Sewing Bee and we look forward to um, talking to you guys about it and I look forward to seeing these guys next week so we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>